for us right now. Josh. Hey guys, let's show you what's going on in Storm Team 2 radar right now. We do have a, our first rain band which came on shore about an hour and a half ago. And what it did, well, along the immediate coastline, we had wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour and even a couple of reports of some trees down. This band is now moving back into Dorchester County, into Colleton County. Still some lightning strikes along this right now, but that's really about it. You can see back out here over the ocean, though, we might have a new one trying to take form. But it's probably going to be a little quiet here for the next couple of hours. It'll be later on today when these that you see out here over the open Atlantic start to roll in later on in the afternoon or the evening. And then the core of the hurricane still down here east southeast of Jacksonville and slowly moving to the north northwest. Hurricane warning up for the entire coast of South Carolina. Uh, this was issued late yesterday and tropical storm warnings in place for inland areas. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about is the potential for storm surge. The National Hurricane Center is giving us a reasonable worst case scenario of four to seven feet of storm surge along the South Carolina coast uh, between now and tomorrow at each high tide. Now, because the storm's forward motion is slowed just a little bit uh, than anticipated, the 1 p.m. tide today uh, has been revised down a bit, about a half a foot. Uh, so it won't be quite as high as what we were looking at this morning. So it most likely won't challenge Matthew at 1 o'clock. But the 1 a.m. tide is expected to challenge both Irma and Matthew. And the noon tide tomorrow, the one that occurs around the middle part of the day, is expected to do that as well. Uh, so we're going to have three tides now, we think, that could produce uh, some fairly significant coastal flooding and then storm surge as well. Uh, Inundation will begin about two to three hours before those tide times, so make sure that you're prepared for that. We've already had some reports of some close roadways and some water in parts of downtown Charleston. The high resolution forecast model keeps us dry for much of the afternoon. There will be some scattered showers and thunderstorms coming in those bands like we've had already this morning, but the heavier, steadier rain will likely hold off until after midnight and really start to pick up as we head toward daybreak. And look at those northeast winds just funneling around the center of Hurricane Dorian as it makes a close approach to the South Carolina low country during the day tomorrow. It will pass just to our east, and that's something we're going to Watch very carefully as you can see the heaviest rain is going to be right on the western side. And one thing to remember too, and we learned this in Matthew, the way that storms interact with our coast as they're approaching from the south, our coast acts like a funnel. What that does is locally enhance rainfall and it locally enhances winds. So just because we're going to be on the west side of this particular storm because it is so large and it's going to be directly interacting with our coast, we may still see some pretty nasty effects from it. It's, it's going to be about what we expected, but you will note this is incredibly close to our coastline uh, as we head through the day tomorrow. Hopefully by 7, 8, 9 o'clock tomorrow, we're going to be able to wind things down and things will be improving. So with that being said, here's what you can expect. These are our expected impacts as far as rainfall is concerned. 10 inches or more in a stripe from southern Charleston County all the way up through Georgetown County. That includes Merle's Inlet, Pawleys Island, Georgetown, McClellanville, Allendaw, Mount Pleasant, through the Charleston Metro, out toward Folly Beach and the lower Charleston Sea Islands down to Edisto Beach. Just inland from that, most of our inland communities in the 6 to 10 inch range and 2 to 4 back toward I-95. Wind gust projections for today, beginning later tonight and into tomorrow, scattered to numerous power outages across the area. 40 to 60 mile per hour frequent gusts back inland, 60 to 80 frequent gusts along the coastline, and some of these could approach 100 at times, particularly if that outer eye wall on the west side does brush the coast. So right now, I think most of us are prepared for a Fairly impactful event here beginning later today and into tomorrow. And the wind speeds are a lot of questions that we've had on everybody's mind today too, Ariel. We've already had some pretty decent reports of those. Yeah, Josh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the storm reports that we saw with just that first band that came in. And just remember, this is an outer band. We are still almost 200 miles away from the center of the storm. And we've already had wind gusts as high as 42 miles per hour out towards Fort Sumner. And as you head out towards the Isle of Palms, those winds as high as 49 
miles per hour. So definitely something that we're keeping a close eye on. We have tropical storm force winds or higher in terms of the gusts so far again just in those outer bands. We also have reports of a road closure in downtown with the heavy rain. That's Rutledge and Shepherd. The intersection between the two uh, completely closed there right now. Now here's a look at our current winds. These are sustained winds anywhere from 5 to 10 up to 28 miles per hour. So the winds starting to pick up just a little bit in some of those outer bands. Our gusts though higher especially right along the coastline with 31 miles per hour out towards Folly Beach 15 into Mount Pleasant. Today, our weather really deteriorating. The best part of the day has already happened. We're going to see more rain and more of the outer bands. Things again really deteriorating. I'll have a look at those hour by hour wind gusts and uh, Josh, excuse me, will break down the threats once again coming up in your full storm team two.